Two published articles state the average MIG welder wastes from 60 to 80 percent of the shielding gas used. In the Fabricator magazine, gas surge at the weld start is defined as the major cause of waste. In Trailer Bodybuilders, a leading shielding gas manufacturer representative, state shop surveys show MIG welders use four to five times the amount of gas they should. When welding, the pressure in the gas delivery hose varies from 3 to 7 psi. When welding stops, the pressure increases to the regulator pressure, which could be up to 80 psi. This stores up to seven times the amount of gas as the physical hose volume. The stored gas blasts out of the MIG gun nozzle when welding starts. We've introduced an easy way to periodically install a pressure gauge in the gas delivery hose to check for flow restrictions in the welding gas supply system. It's called the portable pressure test device. It consists of an industrial quality 0 to 100 psi pressure gauge and on one end a male compressed gas association inert gas fitting called a B fitting and on the other end a similar female fitting. It is simply threaded to the end of the gas delivery hose. The pressure test device also demonstrates why the gas blast that exists at the weld start wastes a significant amount of shielding gas, typically 40 to 50 percent of the amount used due to this starting gas surge. To fully understand the implication of pressure increase in gas volume, consider the amount of air in a tire. Using the equation for determining the internal volume, we find a typical tire that has 5.7 cubic feet of physical internal volume. Is that the amount of air in the tire? Only when deflated. Assuming the tire is filled with 35 psi of air, the amount of air in the tire can be calculated. First we need to define absolute pressure, which is the gauge reading of 35 psi plus 14.7 psi, the atmospheric pressure at sea level. That is 49.7 absolute pressure. The volume of air is found by dividing the absolute pressure by 14.7, which is 3.4, and multiplying by the physical volume of 5.7. Therefore, 5.7 physical cubic feet times 3.4 equals 19.3 cubic feet of air measured at atmospheric pressure. This welding example may make it clearer. A full-size gas cylinder has an internal physical volume of 1.8 cubic feet. Is that what you pay for? No way. The gas volume in the cylinder is proportional to the absolute pressure. Gauge pressure plus 14.7 psi. The cylinder is typically filled with 2500 psi. So adding 14.7 to 2500 and dividing by 14.7, then multiplying by the physical volume of 1.8 cubic feet, shows there are 308 cubic feet of gas in the cylinder. That's what you pay for. The portable pressure test device is easily installed at the gas supply end by unscrewing the gas delivery hose, installing the pressure test device, and reconnecting the hose. It works equally well on the outlet of flow meters or regulator flow gauges where the output gauge is calibrated in CFH. It can also be installed at the female gas inlet on most US made welders, wire feeders, or TIG welders containing a gas solenoid which is activated by a foot control or a switch. It can also be installed on a flow control at a pipeline and when welding is stopped it will read the pipeline pressure. What you'll see on the gauge is the pressure changing from when gas is flowing, usually from 3 to 8 psi, to a much higher pressure when welding stops. The higher pressure level will depend on the type and model of flow control device or the pipeline pressure. With quality cylinder regulator flow control devices, the pressure when not welding will vary from a minimum of 25 psi up to 80 psi. On pipeline gas supply, the gauge will read the pipeline pressure typically about 50 psi. High gas pressure is needed to compensate for the inevitable flow restrictions that occur in production. The spatter in the nozzle are the most obvious, but the small gas passages in the gas diffuser are more vulnerable. In addition, the MIG gun cable doubles as the passage for the wire spiral liner. 
this small area can clog with wire debris such as copper flakes or drawing lubricant. It also changes flow resistance as the cable is bent and twisted. High pressure is needed not just to supply the few extra pounds of pressure required, but to control flow without having to make constant flow control adjustments for restrictions. If the pressure upstream of the needle valve or orifice flow control is sufficiently high, the velocity in the small passage will reach the speed of sound. The velocity cannot exceed that speed and therefore it controls the flow regardless of the typical downstream pressure restrictions. This is called choke flow and has been built into MIG and TIG flow control systems since the processes were introduced. A minimum of 25 PSI is needed to achieve choke flow. That is why quality flow controls always operate above this pressure. This high pressure not only wastes gas at the weld start but causes a very high peak flow that creates turbulence. This pulls air into the shielding gas stream making inferior MIG weld starts. For TIG welding it can also cause tungsten contamination. This graph shows the flow level that creates turbulence. For a 5 8 inch ID nozzle above 50 CFH causes turbulence. For a half inch ID nozzle 40 CFH is the maximum that should be used. Note for TIG welding with a number 6 cup which is 3 8 inch ID 25 CFH cannot be exceeded. Smaller cups like number 4 should not exceed about 18 cubic feet per hour. We developed and patented a device called the Gas Saver System. It is inexpensive, has no moving parts to wear or adjust. It stores 80% less gas when welding stops and cuts gas waste over 80%. This is how it works. Every time welding stops, higher pressure in the gas delivery hose causes excess gas to be stored. This excess blasts out of the MIG nozzle or TIG cup at each weld start. This not only wastes gas, it causes air to be pulled into the gas stream. The gas saver system is a very heavy wall, small ID gas delivery hose that replaces the hose from gas supply to MIG or TIG welder or MIG wire feeder. Looking at a gas delivery hose with an 80 PSI regulator, often used for CO2 to prevent ice particles from forming, the increased pressure increases the gas volume by 6.44 times the physical hose volume. We have measured and found another 13% is caused by hose expansion for a total of 7.3 times the physical volume being stored in the hose at each weld stop. In addition to the small volume, one end of the gas delivery system hose has a built-in peak flow limiting orifice that prevents the gas velocity from creating excess turbulence, thus improving weld start quality. This graph shows a fabricator's results with their standard quarter inch ID delivery hose that produced a starting peak flow of 225 CFH. Note it exceeded 100 CFH for over 3 seconds. This caused internal weld porosity at the start. The peak flow orifice in the gas delivery system limited the maximum flow and the porosity problem was eliminated. The gas waste was also reduced over 80%. Welders appreciate the start benefits of the gas saver system and they still control the flow with the same devices they currently use. Just how much gas can be saved with a gas saver system? A truck box manufacturer relayed their test data. They were able to weld 236 box doors with one cylinder of shielding gas. Just replacing their gas delivery hose with a gas saver system and no other changes they were able to weld 632 doors, a 63% reduction in gas waste. They immediately bought 25 gas saver systems for all their welders and a year later when adding new machines called and asked for 10 more of the magic hose. Some manufacturers have recently tried low pressure to control the gas surge at the start. This approach often frustrates welders and managers because gas flow rates vary since it defeats automatic flow compensation. 
In tests of these devices, we have measured flows changing 15 cubic feet per hour from a typical high to low flow restriction. There was no indication on the flow measurement gauge of these differences, giving a false impression that flow was constant. Some fabricators have been reluctant to try our gas saver system because they had problems with the more expensive low pressure systems and had to discard them. Here are four who reported their problems with these devices. An OEM auto manufacturer discarded 32 gas guards because of flow variations. A heavy equipment manufacturer had a nagging porosity problem which was solved when these same devices were removed. A bar joist manufacturer scrapped 50 of the gas guards because of flow variations and unhappy welders. Our tests show why they were unhappy. An OEM exhaust manufacturer removed 70 of these low pressure devices because of flow variations in production. Another approach tried over the years is to install an orifice at the MIG wire feeder to control flow. That limits the surge but causes other, less obvious problems. Welders often drill out the small orifice, often frustrating managers. However, we have found they were trying to solve the problem any device placed at the wire feeder creates. A recent example follows. First, looking at a figure from the 1982 patent by Stauffer, he defines the need for some extra gas to purge air from the weld start area. On his gas saving device, he added a storage reservoir, shown here, to provide the needed extra gas. A recent shop tour defined and quantified the problem of lack of start gas. A bar joist manufacturer installed flow meters at their 100 MIG wire feeders to control the gas surge, which it did. However, we observed none were set below 50 CFH, about half were set between 50 and 55 CFH, 25% were set at the limit of the flow meters between 65 and 70 CFH, and 25% had the flow ball pinned to the top. That could have exceeded 100 CFH. Welders were trying to compensate for the lack of start gas to purge the weld area. That can only partially help but the high steady state flow observed wasted more gas than they were trying to save. In summary, our pressure test device is a quick way to measure gas hose pressure and define flow restrictions, to demonstrate the reason for gas waste and starting surge, and to measure pipeline pressure variations. The gas saver system provides an 80% reduction in stored gas and limits starting gas surge waste. It limits peak flow rate, avoiding excess turbulence. The pressure is not changed, so automatic flow compensation for inevitable changes in restrictions is retained. There is still enough extra gas retained to purge the weld start area of air, important for quality weld starts. For more information on how we can help you save shielding gas use, visit us at netwelding.com. Thank you.